World Championships where he lost to David Chaloyan of Armenia in the quarterfinals. Chaloyan who then went on to have an unbelievable final against Mark Petrovsky of Russia, which he lost by a narrow margin. And Mulajonov has found himself behind the inimitable, incomparable really, Bakadir Jalolov for the last few years, but gets his chance now. Nelvi Tiervak of Germany has burst onto the scene in the last two, three years as well. Got past Jorda Morajon of Bulgaria in the semi-finals. Lost on a split to the aforementioned Petrovsky in Belgrade just before the quarter-final stage. 2019 got to the last state in the World Championships in Russia. And got a bronze at the European Games, which was also the European Championships that year. Doubled up as the European Championships. A qualification route for the World Championships, as it was then. That wasn't the case last year for, for obvious reasons. The normal system wasn't able to be put into place. So these two called to the centre of the ring. Muller John of Uzbekistan in the red. Nelby Tiafak of Germany in the blue. If he can get a gold medal for Germany here, then they will become the 10th country to get onto that gold medal chart. If Mullajonov can do it, then Uzbekistan will go to six gold medals and they will just sneak ahead of Russia. So here we go, the Super Heavyweight final, the final fight of the 73rd edition of the Stranger tournament. Tiafak in blue there, just looking to try and get onto the jab. Bit of a size difference between these two. The Southport in red from Uzbekistan is Physically the bigger of the two, leads off with a right hand there, Mullajonov landed it, but then was quite square as he came in. Tiafak looked to try and catch him with a right. Using that jab, Mullajonov. Left to the body, but countered by that right hand again from Tiafak, who's got nice quick hands for a super heavy. Holds those gloves quite low, Mullajonov just walked in, walked forward there. And he is open every time he throws here, Mullajonov almost. And Tiafak is looking to throw those counters. Left hand got through from the German. The right hand again there from Tiafak. Mullajonov is landing also, but Tiafak. Is able to counter him almost at will so far. There we go again, left hand to the body from Mullajonov, but he keeps those gloves low and leaves himself so open when he's punching that Tiafak is able to land his own shots. Good combination there from Mullajonov. He looks to just set his feet, swings low to the body, but again, there's that right hand from Tiafak. And it's an interesting one, this, because Mullajonov is on the front foot here. He's looking to be very aggressive, but he's getting caught regularly. The dynamic of the fight, when you look at it, you've got this big unit in red who's looking to unload, but it's the fighter in blue who's punching with more accuracy here. A little step to the right-hand side there from Mullajonov, was winding up with the left hand there. Didn't throw it. Nice little dig to the body there from Mullajonov. Trying to find that jab. He would be well advised to utilise that a bit more, I think. Just with the physical advantages he's got here, he could keep this on the outside. Final 20 seconds or so of round one. And both landing simultaneously there. Good right hand there from Tiafak. He throws the left. I'd be interested to see what the judges do with this because, as I said, it's been Mullajonov mostly coming forward, letting his hands go, but Tiafak has, has landed some good, good shots. He's landed some very accurate punches. Easy to see. I'd go blue corner there. You're looking for clean punches. That's what this is about.
Well, the John Love gets it across the board. I did say it would be interesting to see what the judges did with it, and I could see how that has happened because he was always coming forward, looking to let his hands go. And as I was saying, it's not that he didn't land some good shots because he did, but he got he got picked off regularly by Tiafak. <laughs> It's the big Uzbek who gets the nod there in that opening round. <laughs> so early stages, round two, Tiafak needs this. He steps in with a left to the body there, long left to the body from Rulajonov. Straight left from Rulajonov, but there comes the right hand back from Tiafak. He's not looked bothered by anything that's hit him, Muller Johnov, but that doesn't really matter. They're scoring punches. There's that left to the body. He does like that shot, Muller Johnov, for a big fighter, for a big man like he is. That could do some real damage. There was a left hand up top that got through there from Tierfak, but good combination there from Muller Johnov. Crashed that left hand down the middle. And the punch output is high here. The work rate from these two is, is high, particularly for a super heavyweight fight. We've got another really good southpaw super heavy waiting in the wings, Uzbekistan, Jakongir Zokirov, who won the World Youth Championships last year. They seem to have a conveyor belt of them. Jalolov was 6'5", southpaw, lovely loose one-two. He's now concentrating on the pro ranks. Fights in a couple of weeks, actually. Looking for a right to the chest there, Tierfak. Mulajonov putting his hands together again. Straight left hand followed by right, and he's beginning to dominate this second round here. The fighter in red. And there's that jab which, in my opinion, he doesn't use enough. <laughs> Left hand again there, Tierfak. He's wearing a few of these now. Right hand got through there from the German. Short with a jab there, Tierfak. Same thing for Mulajonov. A little bit clumsy there from Mulajonov as he came forward. There's that left on the inside, and it's a good weapon for him. He finds the body with it regularly. Straight left hand down the middle, get through with it. A right hand came back from Tierfak, but then Mulajonov just immediately threw his jab. This has been grueling stuff for Tierfak in this second round. He's had plenty to say himself. Still throwing plenty back, but he just ramped things up a bit in that second round, I felt, Mila Jonov. I mentioned that super heavyweight final in Belgrade. And it's ten lines across the board again there for Mullajonov between Chaloyan and Petrovsky. It was absolutely unbelievable. It was one of the best fights you'll see. So if you haven't watched it, do go back and look on the channel and, and find it. That and Raheem Gonzalez at light heavyweight against Aliaksai Alfiarov, two of the best fights I've I've covered in amateur boxing, actually. Petrovsky's journey through to the final was absolutely incredible. He's a small super heavyweight. He was giving away size almost, but just showed such unbelievable minerals. Personally, I thought Chuloyan was a bit unlucky in the, in the final. He, he could have got it, but Petrovsky, you couldn't be begrudge him anything. It's the third and final round here, and that's his back for the John of, unless Tiafak can detonate something big on him in this final round, or he suffers a point deduction. He is on his way to the gold medal. 
flicks that jab up from the waist. And turns nice and smartly there, Mullajonov. Rams that left hand into the body of Tiafak again. I think those body shots have, have done a good job for him. I think they've taken some steam out of Tiafak as his contest has gone on. Straight left hand there from Mulajonov. Heading up towards the midway point of this third and final round. The final round of Strangia 2022. Right hand there from Tiafak. The two landed almost simultaneously actually. There was a jab from Mulajonov as well. Stoops him with a, a right to the body, Tiafak in a little bit of trouble there, his weight was just coming forward. Gloves were down and the Uzbek didn't quite manage to tee off. Good upper body movement there from Mullah Jornov, late in the fight, that's a lot of weight for him to carry around. He's obviously in very good shape because he just managed to duck and dive there and stay out of the way. Both of these two feeling this now. The pace has been has been hot. Right to the body there from Tiafak. Moving those feet across the canvas. Well, John, I'm just going for a little bit of a walk there. I think he knows he's got this one in the bag. Standing room only over on that far side. Good to see a lot of teams sticking around. Plenty of teams staying, actually, even though they don't have anyone to support in these finals yesterday and today. Tear fact, pursuing Mullajonov right till the very end there. And the bell goes. Good fight. Mullajonov is going to take it on my card. I'd have given it to him 29-28. I thought Tear fact. Landed some good shots in that opening round. The judges, I'm pretty sure, are going to go 30 points to 27 right across the board in favour of the Uzbek fighter, which will give them their sixth gold medal and take them just above Russia in that gold medal table. Now, Mullah Jonov has spent a long time in the shadow of Akadir Jalolov. Now he has emerged from it. And the winner. By unanimous decision, in the red corner, <laughs> So Mullah Jonov, three rounds to nil with all five judges. And that makes it six gold medals for Uzbekistan, five for Russia, four for Kazakhstan, three for Bulgaria. They've had a good tournament, the hosts. Two for Ireland, two for India, and one apiece for Algeria, Denmark, and Ukraine. So nine countries winning gold medals. And we've got medal ceremonies remaining so don't leave us just yet five medal ceremonies coming up <laughs> 